Hey folks, it is September 2nd, 2021. I am here at the building and I got an update on the SoloVox project. It's doing really good. And um, we're gonna do a deep, I'm gonna do a deep dive on the SoloVox because I think it's a really fascinating, great little instrument. And it has a lot of interesting features, which considering it's from the 1940s, really, I think it's just awesome what they did with tubes. I'm kind of new to tubes myself. I mean, I saw my dad's old Heath kit and Dynaco equipment, but I didn't ever do anything with them. And later on in my life, uh, the uh, thought of the high voltages terrified me, and it still does actually. But uh, you learn to live with the fear. And I've even got on my, my dual triode uh, shirt. And uh, let's take a look at this thing. So none of the videos on YouTube really go in depth on what the controls do. And that's my intent here. And we're gonna take a look at some waveforms. And uh, according to the SoloVox manual, what each control does. So let's take a look. As you'll see, it is a part on the workbench here. And the keyboard uh, unit is completely apart. So we'll get to the tuning in a minute, but let's talk about the controls. Okay, so probably hard to read on the video, but it says bass, tenor, contralto, soprano, vibrato off, fast attack, mute, Deep tone, full tone, first voice, second voice, and brilliant. Again, I, I don't know how well you can see with the light reflecting. But basically, bass, tenor, contralto, soprano, it's like on an organ 16, 8, 4, and 2. That's all that is. It's just the, the pitch level. The vibrato turns on and off, and there you can see the vibrato reed working. Uh, it's not working as it normally would because the unit is not flat on the table. And notice that I have the volume control just fastened down so I don't have to worry about it. Um, fast attack, uh, well, you'll see. Now, I think this is correct. I'm not familiar with this. I don't see anything else about it. In order to have the thing operate, you have to activate one of these controls here. It's, it's like you determine a pitch and a tone color, but you can't just turn on a pitch with none of these on because nothing happens. But let's say I'm going to turn on tenor and I'm going to turn on full tone, okay? And I get... And you notice even with the vibrato off, you can still hear it. I'm going to leave that. So according to the sheet here, let's go through the tone controls. Okay, well first off, uh, let's hear bottom C because I love the bottom octave. Bass. Tenor. Contralto. And soprano. Notice that it ends on B, it does not go all the way up to C, which kind of drives me crazy because I want to have that last note up there. So, turn on one of these and then turn on tone control. So, first thing is fast attack. There is a capacitor that goes across the grids of the control tubes, which makes it attack slowly. Oops, turns it on there. If you turn on fast attack, it gets rid of that capacitor. Okay. Mute. The mute right here. It says six half wave rectifiers in three double diode uh, tubes and V12, well, V10, 11, 12, are normally shunted from ground to the six input wire, six output wires of the oscillator and frequency dividers, thus the tone produced is a string of odd as well as even harmonics. When the six diodes are disconnected by turning the mute switch on, the clarinet frequency of tones is produced. It's not a very dramatic effect. But you can hear it. And especially if you go into the bass range, with mute on. Get kind of clarinet -y. Okay. Full tone. 
the signal develops across a resistor with a small condenser in shunt, which leaves the frequency characteristic except, uh, essentially flat except for very high frequency. So basically, full tone is... Oops, turn that one off. Contralto ring. This thing still still have some contacts working out there. Uh, when an octave goes dead in one range, these switches have three separate contacts, one for each octave, and one of them got dirty. I'm still working with that. So anyway, first voice puts a resonance in the 400 cycle zone. So let's put on tenor and give first voice. hear that resonance on there and let me give it the bass. Oops, I have soprano on there. Okay, then I'm gonna leave, uh, let's see, full tone on, which is basically just flat. And then I'm going to give it second voice, puts a resonance near 800 cycles. So these are basically just peaking filters uh, that they've included, and they use chokes and capacitors, not resistors and capacitors, and I think that gives them a slightly different sound. And then Brilliant over here, the signal develops across an inductance, emphasizing the higher frequencies. Boy, does it ever. Uh, it also makes it twice as loud, so here's what it does. That's, uh, wow. So anyway, you can turn on 16, 8, 4, and 2. Or any combination. So there you have the basic operation there. The tuning of each note is determined by the capacitors underneath the keyboard, in the keyboard unit. It took a long time to figure out how this worked, but the basic thing is, <clears throat> it's pretty much the exact opposite of what I, what I would have expected. There are 12 sets of capacitors, one for each note, right? Okay, here's what I didn't expect. The oscillator, the master oscillator of this machine is always running at B, which is that note, or the very top note, okay? When you're playing that note, all of the capacitors are in series, which is a tuned circuit, and remember that when you put capacitors in series, the capacitance goes down. So that's one, that's all 12, 11, 10, 9, 8, and so on until you get down to one, at which case you only have one capacitor playing, which has the greatest capacitance and therefore the lowest note. So when I was thinking, I don't know why, I just figured it was in reverse that uh, uh, the lower you went, the capacitors would all be stacked up in parallel, but it's the opposite of that. So the original capacitors were way out of spec and the tuning was terrible. And I tried putting them back with uh, values that were very close to the same and um, 
It just didn't work very well because actually I found that this thing was never in tune from the factory because each individual capacitor setup has to have a different value to be an equal tempered scale. As they had it set up from the factory, there were two places where you had identical values. So the spacing between notes would not have been right. It just it couldn't have been because it would have been an equal value and then it would have gotten shorter uh, when you went up a note or down a note. So I went to great trouble to fine tune everything. And there's one place right there where I actually put two capacitors in series across a bigger one just to get the tuning right on. So I went on with a uh, with a cork tuner and literally just would touch, would bridge capacitors across each one until it came dead smack into tune. And you can start with C down there, number one, because it's a 0 0.02 microfarad capacitor and it could be exactly the same. So you use that as a reference and just keep adding your way up and it comes out to be in perfect tune. And as you can hear, it is dead in tune. Very good tune on this thing. Okay, so that's uh, how that works. Now we're gonna take a look at some of the guts here. This is something I've never seen on YouTube. Okay, that is the waveform of the master oscillator. You know, this is all done with tubes and it has a very distinct sound and I wondered what's the key to the sound. Now you look at that, you look at that waveform, see that there's this little wiggle down here at the bottom. And this gets divided down, so it's not exactly this waveform. We're going to look at that uh, in a minute. It gets divided from there, but that is the master oscillator. And every time you play a note, I'm going to hold this. Uh, so if we play B, nothing happens, but then as we go down from there, whoops. is actually the lowest note of the oscillator. So when you play any key, you're switching in these, cap these caps into the tune circuit up there. That's the way it works. Uh, I am going to readjust things a little bit so that we can see what the dividers do and then uh, what, the, um, what the actual output of the speaker looks like. Okay, now I've readjusted the uh, clip leads on the oscilloscope. Now here's where it gets really interesting. You see that waveform right there? That's the output of the binary divider. That is not anything you're going to find with solid state equipment. I've got it on one of the 6H6 uh, mute tubes, and I can show that when I play B, nothing changes, and then we go down. Oops. to see. Now here's the other interesting thing because this is one of the mute tubes that cancels the harmonics. If I turn on, if I turn off the mute, that's the effect that it has. So up here, uh, those two tubes right in the center of the frame are the 6H6 uh, tubes. There's three of them, and these are uh, two of the mutes, and then the last one is all the way over there. And if I was to take the uh, lead, the, the uh, oscilloscope lead, and move it over to one tube, the display would show uh, double the frequency because it's, it's, it's taking all the divisions and muting them like that. But anyway... So that is why, and I'm, I'm glad this, this kind of satisfies my curiosity, why this has such a distinctive sound, and that's because uh, there's no such thing as a square wave <laughs> in this thing, which is wonderful. All right, I'm going to readjust the uh, uh, leads again to the speaker output, and we can see what the waveforms look like on the final output. Okay, so it took me forever to try to figure out how to hook the oscilloscope up to the speaker, uh, because it has a field winding and a coil winding, 
and I couldn't figure out where the ground was, but I finally got it. So um, there's a there's a lot I could go through here. I'm just going to hold one note and go through the different tone controls because that will give you a good idea of what happens. So with uh, what they consider to be a flat response, which is what they call full tone, it looks like this. turn the voltage display up when I do brilliant. Here's brilliant. Okay, so again, second voice. First voice. Deep tone. And mute together. Now we can add those up. I can put on first voice. That's just left with full tone. Uh, one thing I have found is that the fundamental tone of this thing is, is really um, based on negative going spikes. And if we go up in pitch, into contralto. It becomes more triangular. Speed that up a little bit. Let's see. And we can go up another octave. You can see that's almost a triangle, half, almost between a triangle and a sine. But if you go down to the bottom, there's a lot of difference between treble and bass. Oops. So that's the top note, and that's the bottom. And if we go down, So there you have it. Uh, now uh, this is going to be reassembled. Unfortunately, the end pieces, which guard all these wires and everything, are missing. They were missing when, when this unit was given to us. So uh, we're going to build a little box out of wood uh, just to enclose all this. I mean, we can put all this back together. That was in one piece. But um, uh, the original hardware to have it go underneath the piano is missing. So. The next video is going to be actually demonstrating the thing in a musical context and um, showing what it can do. So we'll check in later on.